At a devotional at BYU, June 21, 1950, President George Albert Smith tells the students the refreshing and faith-promoting story of Dr. Pupin of Columbia University. I'm talking now of Dr. Pupin of Columbia University. When he landed here, somebody had stolen his coat before he got to the boat. And when he landed here, he had kept himself warm across the sea in the daytime by backing up against the smokestack on the steamer. <laughs> when he got here, he had 75 cents in his pocket. And when he got off, they said, you can't land in this country with 75 cents. My goodness, we can't let you come in here. Well, he says, this is all I have. <laughs> well, they said, you can't come in. Haven't you got any relatives here? And he thought, he said, no, I haven't any relatives. Have you any friends? Yes. He said, I have. Who are they? Well, he said, one of them is Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> and the other is Harriet Beecher Stowe. <laughs> and the man looked at him and said, is that the kind of company you've been keeping? Back in that country, are those of the Americans you've been associated with? He said, yes. Well, then he said, we'll let you in. <laughs> so he came in and started work in a vineyard. He continued to grow until he became the great scientific leader in the great Columbia University. Well, I wanted to meet him. And so when I was in New York, I told Harvey that I'd like to meet him, and I wanted to, he could fix it. He said he'd never met him. Well, I thought a man that could do what he'd done could do most anything. So next, he says, I'll try. He says, and if I make an appointment with him, by the way, Pupin had been sick, been quite sick, and that was one reason it was difficult to see him. But he says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Boston. This is my son up there and his family for a few days. Well, he says, just as soon as I can find out and make an appointment, can you come back? I said, yes. Well, I just got comfortably located in Boston, and I got a telegram. We'll meet you at the train tomorrow noon in New York. So I hurried back to New York and found that Harvey had made a, I should say Dr. Fletcher, <laughs> had made a, an appointment for me, a humble Latter-day Saint from out in the Rocky Mountains, with Dr. Pupin. But when we arrived at the place where Dr. Pupin lived in a little apartment house, we found he'd arranged for us to have lunch with him. And Brother Fletcher brought one of his associates from the laboratory with him, so there were four of us. And as we sat there, Dr. Pupin told us some of his experiences. And he told that he had been fortunate in his association with individuals. I'm saying this because I want these young men and women to remember what one man or one or two men can do, or women, if they start out right. So he said, you know, Dr. Milliken, if I hadn't done anything else since I came to Columbia but to graduate Dr. Milliken from this school, it would have been worth it. And he said, when he finished here, I said to him, now I want you to go, to go to Europe and finish your course there. Well, he said, I couldn't go to Europe. I haven't got any money. Well, he said, you go out and tell people what you've accomplished here and borrow some money. Do you remember that? <laughs> and uh, that's a long time to remember. You know, I have a marvelous memory sometimes, but my family don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he said, I can't raise any money. He said, you go out and try and raise some money and come back and tell me how you get along. Well, he went out and he tried for a week. And nobody would lend him any money. So he came back to Dr. Pupin and said, now, Dr. Pupin, I told you I couldn't raise any money. I haven't, any, haven't been able to get any money. Nobody will lend me money enough to go to school in Europe. 
Dr. Fink says, I know where there's a man that'll lend you enough money to go there. He said, well, who? He said, Michael Pupin. So he said, I sent him there, and the result is I have the honor of developing the greatest physicist in all the world. Then Brother Fletcher spoke up, and he said, well, it may be of interest to you to know, Dr. Pupin, that it was Dr. Milliken that put me where I am in science. Am I right about that? <laughs> I've thought of it a good many times. It wasn't long after that till uh, Dr. Pupin was given a great dinner. People from all over the country were invited there in New York to attend, and they said a lot of fine things about him. When they got through, he got up and said, I'm greatly honored to be here with this group. It's a wonderful privilege that is mine. You people that are here have done work miles in this world. He says, since you started, some of you who are here, this world has been made different. It's changed. He said, until today, we have the best institutions of learning in the world. We have more money than the world has ever had. We have better homes and better clothing than the world has ever had. And he said, we can, our transportation facilities are such that we can go anywhere. He says, and it has all come about because of the scientific development that you made in your various departments. Now, he said, I want to know that I appreciate it very, very much, but he said there's one remarkable thing about it. He says, with more of everything that the world has sought for since people first lived on it than they've ever had before, we never were in such a mess. He hadn't lived till now. <laughs> and he said... There's one thing lacking. I want to bring this home to you because it was said that the scientists didn't have faith in God. So he said, I want to give you one suggestion. If there were one thing lacking, if you read your Bible, that's from the man who was a scientist, you'll find in that Bible a good many things that will be of interest to you. He said, but one day... When the associates of the Savior were talking to him and asked him which was the greatest of all the commandments, and he told them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. That doesn't sound very far from religion, does it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul. And the other is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, We've done a lot of good things in this world. Won't it be wonderful if we just renew our energy and try to bring people to an understanding that if we will only have love for one another, then we can enjoy all the good things that we have instead of having so much unhappiness about them. I've thought of it a good many times. Not very long after that, Dr. Pupin died. And not very long after that, I was in New York, and Brother Fletcher told me that it, he had just found out who it was that had presented his name as a, for an honorary degree in Columbia. And when a, Dr. Pupin being gone, one of his friends disclosed the fact that it was he who presented Dr. Fletcher's name for that honor. So you see... You don't know how far things may go. One individual may reach so far in the world if they'll keep going in the right direction. 